Hi everyone, welcome to a surprise bonus live stream on what I believe is a Tuesday. I'm almost certain it's Tuesday. I took the week off and it was a three day weekend and I, I don't know what's happening anymore. Gosh, don't ask me, I don't know. I got some fun stuff to do today and uh, and some boring stuff, but we'll, we'll start with the fun stuff, you know, start out start out strong. Um, so I was painting this little 3D print from, um, oh, let's see, I remembered to actually keep it up this time. Um, Retro Design 3D, okay, he's got a Facebook page where he sells this stuff. I got, um, let's do a, a semi-unboxing real quick, shall we? So, here is a larger painted version of the map of Hyrule that he created. Gorgeous. And I have a, I have a fun idea of something I'm going to do with this. Let's we'll see if it works. It comes with this um, wooden frame. I'll set that up real quick so you can see what that's like. Clearly some cool laser etching or something along those lines. Um, and then I got these, these little guys as well, which I thought was cool to see another take on something that I am pretty much doing anyway, right? Um, if you're not familiar with my YouTube channel, maybe you won't know, but I made a dark nut almost the same size. Um, and I will be doing a link, probably several links in different uh, poses for my recreation of The Legend of Zelda video game. But yeah, he just, he makes these uh, super cool, fun, voxely uh, Zelda characters. So. That's really fun, and let's see. So I was painting this one, although now I'm wondering if maybe I don't want to paint it since now I have this gorgeous painted one here. So I might go and kind of undo, just just pull off the paint with some thinner. We'll see. Um, I don't want to spend a ton of time on these little fun things when I have book stuff to produce and such. Let's see, where are we? Here we are. Uh, okay, let's put this let's put this little frame together. It's pretty cool. Here's Ganon. Although I'm pretty sure that's from the second Zelda, The Adventure of Link. So it's not quite canon, but hmm. I guess this goes on the outside. Well, maybe not. Yeah, you would want the text going on the outside. Might have to do a little light sanding to get this to work. Let's we'll see. Needed to be shoved a tad. Nice. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Is that not pretty cool? It's pretty cool. I got it on sale for 80 bucks. Like this is a, you know, this guy created this whole map out of voxels. I think he started in Minecraft and then, you know, set up his 3D printer, printed it, painted it, put this like pretty reflective water in there, did all this woods. $80 is ridiculous. I think normally it's, it's a hundred or more. 
which it really should be. He, he also has one that's like almost 30 inches long, just massive. It's like eight or 16 of the, well, no, it must be maybe four of the, I don't know. It's some amount bigger. Anyway, you should, you should check it out. Again, it's a retro 3D design. Retro, sorry, retro design 3D. Ah. Uh, yeah. If you're interested in that sort of thing, get it. So, okay, so here's my here's my crazy idea. I have this stuff called Poyo Putty. And I have always, since I was a little kid, I was super inspired by this one thing. Oh, I should have brought this up first. Hold on. I'm gonna I'm gonna dink around in folders for a minute. Uh, let's see. I'm also curious. Uh, this is my first time that I'm streaming only to Twitch and not simultaneously to YouTube. So someone in the comments, please let me know if my voice is out of sync because previously, if I'm uh, streaming on my laptop here. Uh, the my voice gets out of sync and I don't know if it's just because I was piping it to two different places or what but uh, where are you Zelda Zelda stuff okay where is that cool cool thing in the Bob it was a uh, Nintendo Power, um, or no, it was the instruction booklet, I believe, had this, ah, oh, here it is, has this crazy diorama. All right, I don't have a sexy way to show you my screen right now, so I'm going to do it a really stupid way. <laughs> Just put my camera on it. You can look that up if you want to see it. But, but yeah, so it was this crazy cool little diorama that came in the instruction booklet that said, hey, this is, this is what's going on here in the world of Hyrule. So my idea was I could create that in spirit, not, not literally, because I can do a lot better job than that. Um, do, 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 do. Here we go. So my idea is I'm going to make a... a sloppy mold of this because he's already gone through all the work of you know getting all the landmarks in place if I just do a quick mold of it with a putt make a putty mold then I could fill that with um, freeform air man I'm really really nasally and stuffed up today more so than usual um, and I can then uh, a car of that and add and subtract from it anyway. I don't want to mess this up, but I'm pretty sure this stuff This stuff has never stuck to anything before so I'm hoping it won't stick to any of the paints or the stuff now But I want to do that real quick It just it just needs to be done as usual gloves because I am fastidious. Agent Shu says voice is very out of sync. Okay, oh, good to know. I have a, a computer that is at the shop right now and when it gets back, I will be streaming exclusively on that and this won't be a problem anymore. So in the meantime, just don't look at my face. Don't look at my, don't look at me. some crystallization around here. I'm going to scrape that off into the trash. 
stuff doesn't last as long as I wish it would. You'll like it. It's probably less than a year old. Which, uh, in reality, means it's probably like four years old. <laughs> we, were, we were thinking about watching um, the movie Lincoln, the Spielberg version of Lincoln. Oh, uh, it's starring Daniel Day-Lewis. And I was like, yeah, you know, that Lincoln movie that came out a couple years ago. I don't know, it was, feels like it was last year, so it was probably like about three or four years ago. Well, we looked into it, it was 2012, so... As an old, old man, these things, time and perception of it is just so off. I just need to stop trying to pretend that I have any perception of it. 76, hello, welcome. I'm going to cover my mouth when I look at the camera and say welcome, and I'm going to look at the camera long enough that, uh, that my words will actually overlap me looking at the camera. Okay, I think that was long enough. Welcome. Okay, so this stuff, you mix uh, 20 to 1, which um, I probably have never done exactly, and it always seems to work out, because I mean, Unless I had some kind of crazy little scale. Oh, I guess I do have a crazy little scale. Is that 20? I try to think, what's well, about 10% and then uh, half that, right? Because that 5% is 20 to 1. If I'm doing my math right, and I never do, uh, then that's how much it is. Worst case scenario is it doesn't set up quite all the way and I have to like use a dental tool to pick it out of the little nooks and crannies. I could also do a brush on silicone over this. Probably, mm, I, it's just so, then you have to get out measuring things and you have to do go, do the whole stirring rigmarole. The, the simplicity of just kneading a ball of stuff together and then plopping it on is is so much nicer. And again, I'm not super concerned with getting everything perfectly in there because I'm gonna be doing a lot of uh, sculpting and carving on top of it. I just wanna get the general shapes in there. There's going to be all sorts of weird little veins and cracks and stuff where the blobs are coming together. But since it's all kind of rocky natural form anyway, I think that will work out just fine. cemetery here. I don't know why he did the cemetery grass green. I'm almost certain it's all kind of ashy white gray there. Clearly he took some artistic liberties. Now I only I only mix the, uh, you know, fairly small batch at a time to get started till I get a good feel for how long it stays pliable.
I just noticed most of what I'm doing is off camera. Sorry about that. How are people's uh, long weekend? Did anyone do anything fun? Tell me about your funs. Seventy-six chilled out around the house. That is a uh, great thing to do. I mostly did that. Uh, my folks were in town for the weekend, so uh, we had an awesome live stream with my mom slash co-author. We talked about world building. Love those. I love talking about that kind of thing. Um, we went and saw, well, we watched, gosh, I feel like in the three and a half days they were here, I think we watched five movies. Let's see, what did we watch? We watched The Maze Runner, the, the last Maze Runner movie, and it was just kind of meh. Uh, I really enjoyed the first one quite a bit. The uh, second one, I also liked. The third one just didn't have any of the, like, cool mysterious elements to it that the uh, especially the first one had the first one was a lot like the first season of lost where it was just like one crazy mystery after another and um i think it just goes back to st something i've talked about before which is like no, no matter how what your answer is to a, a mystery that's been prolonged and it's held out as something to keep keep an audience coming back whatever that answer is it's not going to be some brand new earth shattering thing that no one's seen before so when the mysteries get answered it's kind of unsatisfying um at least for older people like me who have seen all the answers in you know an episode of star trek or the uh, uh outer limits or um the zone one. Why can't I think of the name of the zone one? Twilight Zone. Wow. Yes, I'm getting very old. Uh, let's see. So we watched we watched Hunger Games. Uh, we watched Jumanji, which I actually the, the remake of Jumanji, which I was shocked that I liked because everything about the previews led me to think otherwise. But it was it was really fun. Um, instead of a board game this time, they're sucked into a video game. Um, I, I miss the thing that was so charming about the first one. Well, it was also really dark. It was just, you know, that, that reality crashing into the real world and all the zaniness that ensued. Uh, so there was none of that in this. Um, but the characters were really fun. I, I was... I never noticed before that Dwayne The Rock Johnson is actually a pretty darn good actor. Like, 
I guess I just always assumed since he came from wrestling and, um, you know, he's got that massive body and, uh, you know, he started out in a Scorpion King movie or whatever. I just, I just never really paid attention. You know, I've seen the fe some of the Furious movies with him. I've seen, I watched Mo Moana, Mohan, whatever that was, where he was the voice acted the the one dude and that was fine and it was good but this movie like I, I think because the conceit is that there are these teenage kids who have been put in these avatars of these um, other characters and so each of the actors in the main part of the movie get to pretend to be some kind of a teenager in that different body and uh, so it was just very apparent that they had to do some serious acting to get that across. They couldn't just be their normal persona. They had to be a teenage kid who's trapped in that persona. Uh, yeah, he did awesome, man. Uh, super impressed with Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Also, Jack, Jack Black's performance was also great, but I knew, I knew he could be good already. <laughs> 76 got some puttering done. Yes, yeah, always good to putter. Putter when you when you uh, chill around your house. Uh, what else did we see? We saw Game Night, uh, starring Jason Bateman who I will always adore because he was on Arrested Development, which is one of the greatest shows ever. Um, that was that was a fun, surprising romp. Uh, we went and saw Solo, a Star Wars movie, which we talked about on the last stream a little bit, and I don't want to talk about it too much because there's still people who haven't seen it. Don't want to spoil things. But it was... Again, I, I, I've said this on the stream many times, uh, manage your expectations. If you don't expect much, you're gonna enjoy so much more of the, of the world, of life. And uh, yeah, I really, really had fun in that movie. I think the visual development in it was may have maybe the best visual development, meaning like the design of the aliens and robots and environments and spaceships, like all that stuff. I think it may be the best the best visually designed Star Wars movie ever made. It's certainly not the best movie as a result of that, but it was fun. It's, it was really good fun. I still wish they would have found an actor that actually looked and sounded like Harrison Ford. That sure would have put it over the top for me, but, um, you know, you take what you get. You get what you take. So yeah, I think I've got somewhere between like five and ten percent in each of, of the the part B mixed into this each time, and each time I'm getting a slightly different working time you, you can see like when it's a little bit paler it's kind of hard to see with this white balance but when it's a little bit paler it you know sets up slower the pinker it is the hotter it is the um, faster it's gonna set up so this one I'm guessing is like seven or eight percent so it's gonna be a little faster than my last one. So I will make my micro decisions accordingly. I'll try to get bigger blobs down faster.
I think a lot of these, like these little tree nubbins are definitely not um, one to one, like the amount of, of foliage that are in rocks and stuff like that that are in there. So I'm probably going to end up cutting most of those up and replacing them with um, much higher detailed little itty bitty pebbles and itty bitty bits of foliage. I swear there's another movie we saw, but it must have been pretty forgettable because I cannot remember it. Seventy-six. So you're doing that in order to make some with a 3D printer. Uh, this particular thing I'm doing, like this, was made by someone else with a 3D printer, um, and I bought it from them. Uh, the mold that I'm making is just because I want to make a realistic version of it. That's not uh, voxel-y looking, with real looking rocks and plants and stuff. More like a traditional diorama. I did get my 3D printer. I have ink for it. But because I know that one of my great weaknesses is technical deficiency I absolutely am certain that I will run into a problem right off the bat that I won't know how to get around without having someone who knows their way about around computers and such better than I do so I got a friend who's gonna come over but I'm waiting to get my um, my kind of art studio computer back from the shop that's gonna be the one that I use to stream Hopefully I'll be streaming in such a way that uh, my voice will not be out of sync anymore. Um, but it's also going to be my 3D printing computer. Because you need to have, well, different, different 3D printers work in different ways. But most of them you need to hook your computer up to it to get the, the 3D model over to it. There are wireless ones as well. Um, but yeah, there's just, there's all sorts of little technical things that I just don't understand well enough to be confident that I won't just flounder around and get frustrated for no reason and then call a friend. I figure I might as well have a friend come over to begin with. He's, uh, Pat, who's a friend of the channel. He's been on a couple of my streams before. The one who did that really cool kind of stained glass window and then he did a Wonder Woman, um... What was that? I think it was a wood cutout thing.
The other thing I did a lot of this weekend was walking around. We walked through a lot of parks. My, my neck of the woods has lots of beautiful places to hike and it was gorgeous weather. It was great. The one thing we do not do a lot of when we get together as family is pig out, which is both disappointing and awesome because I'm really needing to uh, focus on not pigging out anymore. I've had quite a setback over the past almost a year now where I've been, normally I'm about uh, I don't know 10 to 20 pounds heavier than I wish I was and um, lately I've been more in the 30 over <laughs> what I wish I was so I just yeah it, it, it's weird how your I, you know body slash mind whatever that whatever that combo is will go through phases where it's easier or harder to to stick to eating healthy. I've just been having a heck of a time lately and I've been trying to figure out like why? What is, is there something different or weird about this past year for me? And I don't, I don't think so. Maybe a little bit weird at work as far as like the type of actual work I'm doing isn't as like super fun and satisfying as it was last year when I was like really doing well on the on the eating healthy front um, but I mean everything else in my life is, is, is awesome this streaming thing is is going well the, you know I'm making progress on most fronts I finished my darn Colossus don't know what it is but it's been rough There's a little arch in there. I'm kind of worried when I pull that out how that's going to rip or tear. But again, um, it only needs to be a very rough approximation to, to do what I need it to do. Seventy six because it says it's called aging. Your body is trying to control you. Yes, indeed, it has been a very consistent trend, and it's getting harder and harder and harder to um, not be fat. I guess it's one of those things where it's it's frustrating because I I was. 40 to 50 pounds overweight most of my adulthood and it was only uh, let's see around 2010 well I guess that's been eight years now uh, since I figured out that the problem was carbohydrates I just don't eat carbohydrates and sugar and the weight just falls off shocking shocking doesn't matter how much fat or protein you have uh, but carbs and sugar which, you know, is a lot of the very fun foods. And so, but yeah, I figured that out and my life got so much better. Like I wasn't exhausted after lunch every day. You know, I didn't have just this massive crash that has been a feature of my entire adult life. That stopped and that's been awesome. Um, so at least, uh, actually that's one thing that, that I have been able to stick to very consistently is 
I eat a very low carb lunch. Uh, it's, it's around evening time when I start really hankering and I don't eat any breakfast at all. Um, I have some half and half in some coffee. That's pretty much my breakfast. Uh, and that makes me feel great and energized for most of the day. But man, come evening, I just become a cookie monster and all I want is sweets and sugars and breads. And it's been harder and harder to resist that uh, over the past couple years. So I had this brief window where I was really succeeding. I managed to lose literally 50 pounds and feel awesome about myself. But yeah, is not lasting. I think the next blob I make can be really big. So I'm going to be just leaning it over what's already there. Yes, yeah, 76. Moderation. So, that's something that I was, as I've, I've been experimenting with quite a bit this past year. And... Uh, it doesn't seem to work for me. So there's there's two factors with that, with moderation. One is when your body gets, body slash brain complex, when it gets a taste of carbohydrates, uh, when it's been low on them for, you know, lower than normal for a, a period of time, um, it's kind of like an addiction thing where the body just starts, body slash brain, just starts demanding more and more and more and more um, and so there's that factor, like even a tiny bit will make it from a willpower perspective, much harder to resist doing more and then more and then more and then more. Um, the other thing is just a, just a calorie consideration. Like if I have more than about 1500 calories a day, even if they're good calories, you know, just, just proteins and fats, um, I, I can still, you know, either hit a plateau or start going up in weight. Uh, so having any carb, sugar stuff makes that calorie uh, goal really hard. So for instance, I started having just one serving of potato chips with some meatloaf, you know, and the meatloaf has some breading in it, so that's got some carbs. It's got ketchup on it, so that's got carbs and sugar, you know, and, uh, but it's a moderate amount, you know, it's mostly protein and fat. Um, 
but once I started adding, you know, a serving of chips with that, uh, I think that that's kind of one of the things that, that got me. Um, just because, you know, 10 potato chips is almost 200 calories. It's ridiculous. Um, tortilla chips as well, like, yeah, anything that's, like, satisfyingly crunchy like that, <laughs> just has that, has that delightful mouth feel, as they call it, um, it, it just, it adds up so fast, and I was thinking to myself, well, I'm trying to be moderate with this, so one serving, one and a half servings, you know, something like that, of potato chips a day, it's not a big deal, right, but apparently for my body, it is a big deal. Seventy six says it's so quiet. Where is everyone? Um, yeah, I don't know. It's an unusual day for me. Maybe that's part of it. Um, unusual day and unusual time. Either that or everyone hates me. It's pro everyone hates me. That's probably what it is. It's personal. I'll just take a person. Revenge of the body. I'm not good on portion control. Yeah, I mean, the best way to achieve portion control that I've found is you just cook your meals beforehand and you have them ready to, you know, in their own container, ready to be heated up. <laughs> that's, that's where I've had my most success. I mean, that's how I, that's how I keep uh, good portions and, um, uh, good quality nutrition in my lunches is it's just I have it in my container I cook it all at the beginning of the week and uh, so I don't really have a choice in the matter well I don't have much of a choice the choice to go beyond that would require actually driving to a restaurant or well I could also eat the really bad snacks that are everywhere at my comp oh my gosh there's so many uh uh, control slash emotional food based landmines all around my <laughs> my company. It's it's no fun. But yeah, I think that was the big thing that that allowed me to to do the fifty pounds thing was just cooking at the beginning of the week or maybe you know two to three times a week depending on what kind of food it is and how well it holds up. Um, and having everything portioned beforehand. Because when you're portioning it, that's not when you're hungry and desiring to eat as much food as possible. You're just making a rational decision about how much food, how many calories that is compared to what, you, you know, your target should be. And uh, so, yeah, it's like when when people are asking for advice when they're first starting to try to figure out how to lose weight. That's my number one thing is learn how to make food that you like, find recipes for food that is, um, you know, as low carbohydrate and sugar as possible, and then cook it in batches every couple of days or every week and um, make individual portions that you will um, only have access to during the week. Cooking for one is hard to do. Um, e I mean, cooking for one is fine if you're doing it if if you're doing it for several days or a week, is what I've found.
Let's see. Pot life is three minutes, cure time is 30 minutes. Cool, so we'll actually be able to get a mold out of this today. That's exciting. That's the other big advantage to uh, doing this putty mold rather than brush on stuff. Six says, uh, frozen veggie, skinless chicken, and low salt gets boring. <laughs> yeah, I don't have I don't have to do low salt, fortunately. Um, that low salt is not a universal thing that should be assumed. That's just if you have very particular uh, blood pressure issues and stuff. If your doctor tells you low salt, then yes. But otherwise, I don't think salt is a big deal. Damon, hey Damon, welcome. Serious desync on my audio. Yep, yep. Uh, my computer is still in the shop. Has something to do with my friend doing it for me for free. <laughs> Probably has something to do with how long it's been taking. Um, so yeah, my laptop. I was hoping, uh, because this is the first time I'm streaming uh, just to Twitch and not also to YouTube, I hoped maybe that would fix the sinking problem, but alas, it uh, does not. Damon, what did you do on this beautiful three-day weekend? I assume it was beautiful over there in the middle of nowhere. I'm doing way more than 5% mix here, but that's because this back part um, is just going to be one quick slap it on, and I'm not worried about uh, detail at all. I 
Purple dragon kicks down the door. The dragon has arrived. How is everyone doing today? I assume that's how purple dragon speaks. Great, great purple dragon. Sorry that my voice is out of sync, but um, just pretend I'm uh, stuck in a time vortex. I mean, I guess I kind of literally am in relation to how you are perceiving me, but uh, yeah, yeah. Glad to have you here. David says, it was over a hundred all weekend. Saturday, I played trees as seen on Facebook and got my garden going finally. Sunday, I donated, did a couple other things in the yard. Monday, I went and saw Solo and finished planting most of my annuals. Saturday, I drank over 300 ounces of water. Yeah, man, outside doing yard work in 100 degrees? I hope so. That's, uh, that's rough, man. How'd you like Solo? My official stance on it is, it was fun. It was really fun. I'm glad they're making fun Star Wars movies, yay. My other stance is, my, my first impression of it still has not gone away, which was, why didn't they get a guy who looked and sounded like Han Solo? They found someone who looked and sounded like, uh, like Lando Calrissian. concerned that I may not have mixed this stuff sufficiently because I'm still uh, I guess most of this stuff is the stuff I've on the surface okay yeah yeah here's older stuff and it's not coming off but this later stuff is still super squashy I was wondering what I was actually going to end up doing with this uh, putty before it, you know it's shelf life came up so I guess I'm glad to be using more of it than I should be on this purple dragon says lol try a bit higher and more feminine okay let's see kicks down the door and says you ready uh How's that? Is that exactly what you sound like? I probably blew out everyone's speakers. I apologize. Damon says it was perfectly okay, but didn't really add to the development at all. Why are all the droids in the newer movies so much more advanced than the originals? <laughs> Because people's conceptions of robots have changed, I suppose. But yes, uh, that's, that's bothersome. When it comes to uh, having a consistent and well thought out universe. But I mean, that's not, not necessarily... Having a consistent, well thought out universe, as we were talking about on the last stream, is not necessarily uh, the thing that um, the developers of Star Wars need to have be priority number one. Priority one is to uh, turn the franchise into a... Um, a regular revenue generating machine which I assume they think means making sure that their movies are consistently fun and fun and consistent are not the same thing for most people they are for me they are for a lot of nerds who get annoyed by that sort of universe breaking 
But I think the vast majority of the audience does not perceive nor care about those kind of ped pedantic uh, issues. Purple Dragon says, so much worse, but it was so great. Are you referring to my impression of you? Was it the British accent? Is that what ruined it? It's that thing, you know, if anything uh, in America that is fantasy related, the assumption is that everyone needs to have a British accent. Yeah, I'm streaming. As long as I want to be. You guys have plans? Uh, I don't know how to tell on this. About 45 minutes. You need help? Yeah, I'm really exhausted and dead. Well, if you are exhausted and dead, problem solved. We got here actually really good timing. Yeah. We were going to just do cockpit chicken and like the Caesar salad from there. Okay. My parents need to go to Safeway too. Yeah, I can wrap up and we can go do shopping. My in laws are here for a visit. They get to help me nurse Heather after her surgery tomorrow. She's getting her right arm cut up and re-put back together, so hopefully her tendons will work appropriately. Alrighty. We, I think I'm gonna do one more just blob touch-ups on the parts where I still see a little bit of color poking through, and then we'll call it a day. Oh, honey, Damon says hi. Uh, David says, Star Wars is turning into Marvel's sci-fi. It isn't special like it was. I want tentpole must-see awesome, not the second one in six months. See, I actually think I think they're right to turn it into um, not tentpole, change the universe, this is the greatest thing ever uh, stuff. Because they can't, they can't live up to what they did to us as kids. No other movie will ever take you back to those feelings. Chasing that dragon is just going to bog them down. It's going to make every movie this ponderous, massive, too many cooks in the kitchen situation where expectations are too big and will never be met. I think it's good that they're turning it more Marvel, where it's just like, hey, I see the Star Wars logo. I know it's going to be it's going to be fun. I'm going to see cool things. I'm going to see some fun spectacle, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, I don't think they have another option. You can't capture lightning in a bottle. You can't be 1977 again, and where the American people are longing for a particular take on this genre. Um, there's just, there's factors that are out of Disney's control, out of George Lucas's control, out of everyone's control. They, all they can do is make fun movies. I, I don't know. That's my opinion on it. I mean, in spirit, I agree with you, Damon. I wish every Star Wars movie was gonna be this ground, earth-shattering event that people talk about for years. But uh, we're just, we're in a different market now, we're in a different time now. Market expectations are different, the way people consume media is different.
All right. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna do one more thing real quick. I'm gonna do a quick mother mold with freeform air. Doesn't have to be thick, just just enough to make it so when I, no, oh, that's not the lid. Just thick enough so that when I put the stuff in the other side, it won't um, warp or distort the mold much. Dragon says, I do find it funny that we have a number of British actors with amazing American accents. True. Uh, Damon says, my wife has another MRI Friday, the never-ending appointments. Tell me about it. Uh, I wish your wife well, by the way. Um, Purple says, don't chase the dragon. Dragons don't like it. <laughs> David says, they could have spent the rest of my life making movies based on all the existing novels and I'd be happy. Now that I agree with, yes. They have this massive catalog of proven good stories. They don't need to keep making them up by committee. And uh, yes, that I could not agree with you more. Damon says, also, I'm visiting Washington in August. Oh, cool. What part of Washington? If you're in the, if you're in the neighborhood, we should uh, grab lunch or something. Purple Dragon wishes both their wives luck and speedy recovery. Thank you. I'll pass it along. I love freeform air. This it's just so I mean it's not that it's fun to work with. It gets really sticky and tacky and messy and I hate that about it. Um and it takes way too much pigment to color. But man, the having a super lightweight, very strong, easily sanded, easily carved uh, and cheap, like when we, I bought these massive, you know, five gallon bucket, well, is it five gallon, two and a half on each side? I think so. Maybe it's just two gallon, I don't know. But these huge buckets for about a hundred bucks and compared to every other medium that's anything like this, it's just a super great uh, deal as far as filling volume for, you know, per dollar. David says, most of my family lives over in the Kitsap Peninsula, but I'm going to be there for a week. I can make some time to head your way. Kitsap Peninsula, is that, is that where uh, Deception Pass is? I'm not sure which is the Kitsap Peninsula.
across the Tacoma Narrows. Uh, so that's like where um, Bremerton and such is. I thought that was, I thought that whole chunk of land uh, west of Seattle was the Olympic Peninsula. It says Olympic Peninsula is where the Olympic Mountains are. Okay, my dummy version of the map in my head of Washington State, uh, there's the, you know, the, the bay that Seattle is on. And you go across the bay and you're on the chunk of land that the Olympic Mountains are also on. Uh, I'll have, to, I'll have to refer to a map to edumacate myself better. I've certainly done the drive up the 101, you know, from around Long Beach and then down through uh, the Olympic Peninsula. I thought it any time you cut east, you're just going to go until you hit um, the, the sound, not the bay, the sound, Puget Sound. So, um, like I said on the last stream, I've got this week off, so I'm probably going to be popping on and off at random surprise times, uh, but only, definitely most likely tomorrow I'll have my normal uh, Wednesday evening, uh, depending on how Heather's doing. Um, but I mean, it's just kind of an outpatient thing, and it's just on her arm, so I don't, don't expect anything catastrophic to be going on. But you never know. Uh, Damon says, within the Puget Sound is the Kitsap Peninsula. Peninsula. Across the water on the left side of Puget Sound is the Olympic Peninsula, which is mostly composed of Olympic National Park, which 101 goes all the way through. So there's another chunk of water between the Kitsap. Oh. Okay. Okay. I think I'm. I think I'm seeing it now. All right. I will uh, see you guys probably tomorrow.